Welcome to the Escapee Smart Way program. The first part of this brief program will introduce you to the principles of RV weight and load management and how it affects you in your RVing life. The next section will discuss getting your vehicle information sheet filled out and getting your vehicle set up properly for the Smart Way program. Without further ado, let's get started. Your instructor today is Neil Leekander, the author of the RVer's Ultimate Survival Guide and frequent lecturer on these same subjects at both the Escapades and the Escapees Boot Camp programs. First, in a statement that may shock you, I would like to suggest to you that RVing can be the most wonderful of all activities or your worst possible experience. The reason for this reality is that RVers purchase, operate, and live in a complex vehicle. RVers drive frequently into areas and activities, exposing the RVer to a multitude of hazards and unknowns. At the same time, we must acknowledge that there is little in an average RVer's background that prepares us for such an endeavor. While all of us bring some skills to the lifestyle, very few are prepared to meet the diversity of challenges and complexities that confront RVers every day. That is the precise reason for the Escapee Boot Camp and Smart Way programs. Together, these programs provide most of what RVers require to thrive in the lifestyle. They provide a wealth of factual information, allowing you not only to operate your RV and all its systems, but to operate it properly and safely. There is no question about it. RV overloading and poor weight management is the major problem facing RVers today. Proof of that is that overloading and all of its ramifications are responsible for most, if not all, the serious problems incurred by RVers. The reason for this is really quite simple. RVs are the only vehicles on the road that operate at 100% of their capability 100% of the time. No other vehicle type even comes close to this reality. Think about it. Trucks do indeed carry very heavy loads, but they do so only one half the time. And passenger cars are designed to carry four or more passengers, but seldom have more than a solo driver on board. Again, RVs are the only vehicles on the road that operate at 100% of their capability 100% of the time. We now need to take a quick look at the magnitude of the problem. To do so, we will use numbers provided by the RVSEF, that is the Recreation Vehicle Safety Education Foundation, who have weighed nearly 30,000 RVs in great detail. Their data breakdown looks like this. The column on the left shows that 57% of all RVs weighed exceed one or more of the government or manufacturer's weight ratings. The right-hand column indicates that the remaining 43% fall within all ratings. That data represents a significant sampling and reveals that in excess of half of all RVs are overloaded in one or more areas, exposing the operators to some degree of jeopardy. This is a good news, bad news story. The bad news, it reveals that 57% of the RVs weighed fail this very modest test of the RV's basic roadworthiness. That is a shameful record indeed. The good news is that 43% of the RVs weighed meet all the weight requirements placed on them. This is solid proof that it can be done. Well, with that reality in mind, we can conclude that there is indeed an overload problem in the RV world. However, when faced with that fact, the common reaction is disbelief that my RV has a problem. It is generally perceived that it's the other RVs on the road, not mine. The motorhome operator thinks that it's a trailer problem, while the conventional trailer owner believes it's a fifth wheel issue, and everyone with a pickup truck is firmly convinced that their truck can pull or haul just about anything. When we take a closer look at the data, however, and break it down by RV type, we can see that the numbers are pretty well equal among all types of RVs. 
This proves that the problem is an RV problem that is not limited to one type RV, nor is any type RV immune from the problem. Now that we know there is a weight and load management problem in the RV world, we need to take a brief look as to why the problem exists. It appears that the very dramatic lack of factual RV specific information is a major contributor to the problem. Prior to September 1996, the only readily available information was the federal data plate, which provides only two weight ratings, although they are critical for the RVer because they bear the full legal authority of the government. The GVWR, or Gross Vehicle Weight Rating, and the GAWR, or Gross Axle Weight Rating, for each of the axles on the vehicle. Both these values are clear, simple, and easy to measure, and have proven adequate for trucks, the application for which they were developed. They do not, however, work very well for RVs, as we will see in a few moments. After September of 1996, continuing until August of 2000, RVIA, the Recreation Industry Association, acknowledged that the lack of information and the resultant problems by initiating a REVA data plate program, giving the consumer additional information. The REVA data plate provides the UVW, or unloaded vehicle weight, the NCC, or net carrying capacity, and the GCWR, or gross combined weight rating. From August of 2000 until June of 2008, REVA modified the data plate to make it compatible with the Canadian compliance label, a requirement of that country. The data plate provides the SCWR, or sleeping capacity weight rating, and the CCC, or cargo carrying capacity. This data plate version changed the terms used and effectively made the values presented more user-friendly. All versions of the REVA data plate provide the information on a single sheet of paper attached to the inside of a cabinet located in the kitchen, bath, or bedroom. During the time period when the REVA data plate was used, the government extensively studied and ultimately instituted a new federal RV data plate. Effective June of 2008, the new federal data plate provides the O and CC or occupants and cargo capacity limit and the SBSC or the safety belt seating capacity. The RV occupant and cargo capacity label replaces the REVA data plates. It is simplicity to an extreme, providing a single value representing what the RVer may carry in any combination of passengers, cargo, or tongue weight. Now that we have identified the available data sources, let's take a quick look at them so we can recognize them when we need them. The federal data plate for the tow truck will always be affixed somewhere in the proximity of the driver's compartment, often on the driver's door pillar. For the trailer, it should be located on the left side of the tongue or pin box. However, it is common to find it located on the forward left side of the body of the RV. This example is for a large fifth wheel trailer with two axles. The data plate tells us that this vehicle has a GVWR of 16,950 pounds with a forward axle GAWR of 7,000 pounds and a rear axle GAWR of 7,000 pounds as well. Let's turn our attention now to the September 1996 version of the Riva trailer data plate. This data plate identifies the specific vehicle in question by model number and then continues on to provide the GVWR or gross vehicle weight rating, information derived straight from the federal data plate, the UVW or unloaded vehicle weight. This is the weight of the RV as manufactured with full fuel, lubricants, and factory installed options. This is a highly useful piece of information. The NCC, or net carrying capacity, 
is a calculated value of the difference when we subtract the UVW from the GVWR. It essentially defines how much stuff we can put aboard the vehicle. The August 2000 to June 2008 Riva trailer data plate identifies the specific vehicle in question by VIN number and then continues on to provide the GVWR or gross vehicle weight rating derived straight from the federal data plate, the UVW or unloaded vehicle weight identifying the weight of the RV as manufactured with full fuel, lubricants, coolants, and factory installed options, and the CCC or cargo carrying capacity. This is the resultant value when the UVW and all known weight added by the manufacturer and the RVer, including a full tank of fresh water and LP gas, is subtracted from the GVWR of the federal data plate. Effective June 2008, the federal government implemented the RV ONCC label to supplement the original federal data plate. The ONCC trailer data plate identifies the specific vehicle in question by VIN number, then continues on to provide the ONCC cargo rating. This is simplicity to an extreme, as it presents RVers with a single weight value, representing the total of all cargo and tongue weight that may be carried by the RV. What could be simpler? The ONCC label is located in the proximity of the forwardmost door on the passenger or curb side of the RV. Please note that for both Riva data plates and the ONCC federal data plate, the RV manufacturer is permitted to estimate the UVW reported. Should you see the word estimated or an asterisk associated with this weight, its accuracy should be verified. Thus far, we have identified that a lack of available factual information contributes significantly to the load and weight management problems faced by RVers. However, the real issue with RVs is asymmetry. Asymmetry is a large and complex problem because it can take many forms. In RVs, we must be concerned about asymmetry because RVs are built to accommodate our lifestyle not for weight and load management purposes. I will try to explain a little bit about this complex problem in the next few slides. Using the data supplied by the RVSEF, we note that in excess of 10% of all tire overloads actually exceed the tire's capability without exceeding the axle rating. Wow, that sounds impossible, or like some sort of double talk. But let me illustrate the problem and suggest that this type of asymmetry only exists in the RV world. Starting with a simple beam axle as used on an RV trailer, the axle with its wheels, hubs, and springs is rated to carry 6,000 pounds. Then we install a tire rated at 3,042 pounds on each end, so we have plenty of tire for our axle. To verify this, let's take the loaded RV to a truck scale, where we learn that the axle weighs 5,850 pounds. So we return home feeling pretty good about the situation. We have a 150-pound margin. Now, let's take the same RV to the Escapee SmartWay program and repeat the weighing process. This time, we learn that the right wheel tire weighs in at 2,500 pounds but the left wheel and tire comes in at 3,550 pounds, a significant overload for the tire, while the axle still weighs in at 5,850 pounds. That is RV asymmetry at its worst, and it will hurt you. Tires cannot withstand the 10% overload identified by the wheel-by-wheel -wheel weighing process. This is just one example of asymmetry that is built into RVs, because they are designed to accommodate our lifestyle, not for full and proper distribution of the weights carried. For those of you who operate truck trailer type RVs, you have a couple of very useful tools to help you with the weight and load management issues. The hitch you use to tow with, 
provides several adjustments to fine-tune your toe setup for weight considerations. When your hitch was originally installed, it was probably done so using various rules of thumbs and the installer's experience with the final test being a relatively level trailer. The results may or may not be correct for proper weight distribution. Determining that is a crucial component of your Escapee SmartWay program. For tongue type trailers, please consider that there are four adjustments to be concerned with. First, the selection of torsion bars. This is the first decision to be made. They must be matched to the weight of the trailer, or more specifically, to the tongue weight of the trailer. You will learn that value precisely when the wing is complete. Second, adjustment of the chain lengths of the hitch. This is critical. Many RVers under tension the torsion bars to some degree. Third, the vertical adjustment of the hitch may be required after the selection of torsion bars and their adjustments is complete. The actual effect of the vertical adjustment is to transfer weight between the axles of the trailer as well as to assure a level ride configuration. And fourth, the last adjustment possible is an angle adjustment of the ball. The purpose of this is to prevent binding or interference between the ball shank and the hitch coupler, particularly as the truck trailer enters or leaves a steep incline. As a final thought, each of these adjustments affects the others. Thus, it may be necessary to reweigh your rig to verify the results should significant changes be undertaken. For those RVers operating fifth wheel type trailers, the process is simpler because there are only two adjustments to be considered, but these are equally important. First, the primary adjustment for a fifth wheel RV is the positioning of the hitch within the bed of the truck. The rule of thumb is that the center line of the hitch needs to be placed one to two inches forward of the rear axle center line. This positioning is critical in that it assures that there is a positive weight transfer from the trailer's tongue weight not only to the truck's rear axle but also to the front axle as well. This adjustment will be verified during the weighing process. Second is the vertical adjustment of the hitch and in some cases the tongue box of the trailer. The purpose of this adjustment is to assure equal distribution between the axles of the trailer and to assure adequate clearance between the trailer and the bed of the truck. Why do I really care if my RV is overloaded or not? It is a great question and one we should discuss at least briefly. The reality is there are four important aspects to overloading that need to be acknowledged. Reduce durability and reliability of your RV. When you operate your RV beyond any of its limits established by the manufacturer or the government, you are essentially requiring the RV to do more work than it was designed for. Every component on the vehicle has to work harder. And just like in humans, when we push ourselves too far, something will break or give way. Personal safety is jeopardized. The personal safety implications of a blown tire are obvious, but a simple highway breakdown resulting from overloading might leave you stranded beside the highway. This can be just as serious. Consider the trucks and buses whizzing by only inches from your door as you wait for a tow truck, and you can see that it is indeed a dangerous situation. Loss of warranty coverage. Your RV may be the second largest purchase you have ever made. At very least, it represents a serious expense for most of us. The loss of warranty coverage because you operate beyond the limits of the RV could be catastrophic. Legal liability. Finally, the issue of legal liability should remain clearly in your mind at all times. While this is not a legal ruling, it is important to understand that the whole world knows that RVs are commonly overloaded. To lawyers and the legal system, that means that they have someone to blame if and when you have the misfortune of being involved in an accident, whether you actually caused it or not. 
This is the principle of shared liability and can reduce the financial responsibility of others if your RV is found to be overloaded. Now let's address getting your RV weighed. We'll do that in three easy steps. Step 1. Completing the weight information sheet. First, we request your personal information. But let me assure you that the information will not be used in any fashion that can be associated with you or your RV. Or will we use this information except to contact you should there be an urgent need to do so. The tow vehicle information comes from the federal data plate located in the vicinity of the driver's door. It gives you the GVWR and the GAWR ratings for your tow vehicle. The GCWR is generally found in the vehicle towing guide you should have received when the truck was purchased. If you do not have that document, then check the operator's manual as it may be found there. As a last resort, it may be necessary to contact the truck manufacturer to determine this important number. The trailer information is found on the vehicle data plate located on the left side of the tongue or left forward body section. These data plates are frequently not legible, in which case you will have to resort to other company literature to find these ratings. The tire information requested is all available on the sidewall of the tire. It will, however, probably be necessary to get something to kneel on because reading it is tough on mature knees. Where the form calls for normal pressure, use the pressure that you currently utilize, not necessarily the maximum tire pressure shown on the sidewall, unless that is the pressure you use. In the final column, the form requests the DOT age code. This may be difficult for you to obtain. Look for a string of 15 to 16 alphanumeric characters beginning with DOT and ending with three or four numbers. It is the last three or four digits that will give us the date code for the tire. Note the date code is only on one side of the tire. Remember that the escapee Smartway staff personnel will complete the last section. When the weighing is complete, you will receive back a copy for your information and records. The hard part is now complete. Step two is to be certain that your RV is in the proper configuration for weighing. It is normally suggested that RVs be weighed in the worst case condition. That includes a normal passenger load, a normal load of personal property, commonly referred to as stuff, a full tank of fresh water, a full tank of fuel and propane, and the gray and black water tanks empty. This represents the worst case that you should ever have to travel the highways. Step three is also quite easy. All you have to do is to take your RV to the weighing site at the assigned time. From that point on, the Smartway staff will do all the hard work. Please remain alert and follow all instructions. Upon completion of the weighing process, the staff may be available for a brief consultation. In any event, you will be given the following items which instruct you how to proceed to obtain the maximum value from your RV weighing. This includes the original vehicle information sheet with corner weights now added, the now that you have been weighed booklet, and a feedback form to tell us how we are doing. May you always enjoy safe RV travels while you seek out what lies over the next hill and around the next corner. We at Escapees look forward to having you attend a full Escapee boot camp program or escapade seminar on these same subjects.